Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In today's Microsoft Excel video, we're going to talk about the law of diminishing marginal returns. What that law says is basically I have fixed resources. I keep adding additional variable resources. At some point, the additional output is going to go down. So I have on my screen right now the finished product. So let's just go and take a look at a couple examples of diminishing marginal returns. Let's set up an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to make a chart. Uh, not required, but I'm going to do a couple if statements too. So this file will be available to you in my YouTube description. Also, there'll be chapters for this video. So I'm going to go to the worksheet that says start here. And all I've done is type in three words. So here are two examples of the law of diminishing marginal returns. If you've ever been driving around and noticed someone's having their lawn done by a, a lawn service, frequently there'll be two people. One person is usually mowing the grass. The other person's usually uh, got the leaf blower and also handles the edging. So they are specializing so they can get that lawn done quicker. In my example, I want to open up a support area so people can call in. So I go and rent a space and just say it's 2,000 square feet. So it's a fixed space. And I go in there and start handling support calls. And that's how I make money. Well, I realize I'm doing about 100 calls a day. So I hire someone else. So I bring on the second person. But instead of going from 100 to 200, we go from 100 to 220. And the reason is I'm handling now just Excel calls and Microsoft Team calls. The other person is doing PowerPoint and Word because they specialize in that and I specialize in Teams and Excel. So here is how you would set this up. At zero workers, which is my input, I've got zero output. I'm going to get rid of that just for a second. So I start off with these two columns. And then I come on board, one, and I do my 100 calls. I hire the second person, and again, it goes up to 220 because we're specializing. Then I bring in a third person, and I'm going to make that 360. I know you don't want to sit here and watch me type, so I'm just going to autofill down to the number eight. So I end up with eight workers. I already have this on my clipboard, Windows V. If you recall, you can put 25 items on your clipboard now. I have a video on that right up here. So here's our input. Those are the number of workers. Here's our output. Zero calls, 100 calls, 220. Well, at some point, according to the law of diminishing marginal returns, our output is going to start going, our overall output will start decreasing. So here's where I'm going to add that column. Just a really simple formula here. I'm going to do equals cell B3, which is 100, minus cell B2. So I brought in 100. Here's the 120. Perfect. Keep going up. 140 with worker number 3. 110, there you go. Here's the issue, and here's where the law of diminishing marginal returns comes in. The overall output, I'm in cell B3, is going up, as you can see in column B. Until you get to row 10, by the way. So overall output is headed up, but the marginal change, which is column C... 100 to 120 to 140, but then I go to 110. So the law of diminishing marginal returns happens at worker, anyone? Not worker number eight, it happens at worker number four. I'm going to manually, so you actually have three different sections here. You've got that section. You've got the law of diminishing marginal returns, which is now in yellow, and it happened at worker four. And then you've got what's called negative returns. I'll put it in blue. Because not only at some point I brought in another worker, 
not only did the marginal change continue to decrease, the total output actually went down. So if you want to see this as a chart, I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to use one of Microsoft Excel's recommended charts. I just typed that in there so you can keep up with that. That's the law of diminishing marginal returns that happens at work before. I tell you, before I do the chart, hold tight. I want to do two if statements. I'm going to call it if one and if two. Here's another way you can tell without having to sit there and look at the numbers. I'm going to say if cell B3, this will be really simple, is greater than B2, comma, value of true. Well, that's going to be an increase, comma, value of false is a decrease. I have those in quotations, by the way, the text. That is it. I'm using an if statement with three arguments right there. I should get the word increase. I do. So I should get increase all the way down until the last one. Perfect. There's a decrease. Now my if statement two. So if one took a look at the output. If two is going to take a look at the marginal change. I don't even have to write it again. B3 greater than C3. I now want to look at D. I'm going to just auto fill it over. So now it's if, sorry, I want to look at C. If C3 is greater than C2, increase, decrease. So here we go. I should get increase, increase, increase. Perfect. I should get a decrease here. And again, we've already discussed it. That is where the law of diminishing marginal returns kicks in when I got the increase and decrease. I should get a decrease, decrease for the last one. That is where row 10 negative marginal returns happens. So now let's chart this. Um, I'm not going to chart the if statements. So I'm going to highlight A1 to C10. I'm going to use a line chart for sure on this. Here are line charts right here. I'm actually just going to use one of Excel's recommended charts. Let's see what it does. Nope. Uh, technically correct, but no, no. I want a line chart right here. Output marginal change. That's looking good so far. Put that on the screen here. And let's, I'm going to stop right here before I fancy this up. If you notice, I'm going to use this one right up here, style number two. I have Microsoft 365. I don't know if that's available to you if you don't have 365, but it doesn't matter. Here's the key. My output is in blue. Output is going up 100, 220, 360, 470 until you get to the 650 and go down. So while, what I'm doing is looking at the output, and then I'm going to look at the marginal change, 100, 120, 140. 110 right there, that is the spot where overall output is increasing, but my marginal change is decreasing. That again, number four, keep saying it, that's where the law of diminishing marginal returns kicks in at worker number four. We go into negative at worker number eight. That is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe. I have a lot of Excel videos. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.